Hey, good morning, everybody. This is David Pendleton, and I'm pretty excited because today is going to be my first ever rookie playthrough with very uh, beginner clubs. Okay, so this is going to be set up for players who are very new to the game, uh, players who are looking to become a better player overall, and really understand uh, tournaments. So, uh, let me show you the clubs that I have. Okay, again, they're they're very basic. Um, I don't have a big topper unlocked. I don't have a quarterback, none of that. The only wood clubs I have are the Horizon, Viper, and Big Dog. You can see my long iron uh, selections are very low here with only a Goliath 3. And, you know, short iron-wise, I really have to resort to using the Kingfisher, which is a club really not many people play with at all. And then I only have one wedge unlocked, the Dart. And same thing here for the rough iron, um, you know, two, two rough irons unlocked, but using the rough cutter and sand wedge, you know, we have the desert storm and the Malibu. So, you know, this video is really going to be tailored towards newer players to the game. Now, here's what I ask of you. If this is your first time watching me or your first time watching a playthrough, I challenge you to not skip through any of this content. I will talk a little bit about the game. I'll talk about how to make you a better player. I'll talk about some things to avoid. And I'm going to explain some things like elevation, um, which you may not be 100% familiar with, or also how it works. Now, you know, I want to get rid of the misconception that you have to have great clubs in this game in order to compete because you do not. Uh, you just saw my bag, and you can see here that I shot a very good score on day one, so this is no practice round, about, and, you know, minus 14. Now, you look at this person above me. Uh, this person is actually a professional streamer online. This is Christian. This is his one of his Toast of Golf Clash accounts. And if we take a look at his account here, um, you're going to see that this guy has, you know, almost 1,900 trophies. He has several very high tournament finishes. He's played in 1,646 games, and, uh, you know, I can guarantee you, if you go look at his stream, his clubs are way, way, way better than mine. You know, this account right here um, has only played, you know, 533 games, and it's basically all Tour 2. I have never taken this account out of Tour 2 which is why my clubs are very low and limited. And I did that on purpose so that I could give, you know, a good playthrough for all the true rookies out there. So, you know, please um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, and please hit the like button. You know, those two things really help me out. And then I'm going to get into the replays here in just a second. Now, if you're somebody that has better clubs, Keep in mind, I'm going to continue to do my normal rookie walkthrough, uh, which is with more advanced clubs. I'll probably have that out tomorrow afternoon at some time. And I also do professional uh, content as well. So for the pro division, I'll have that out either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, so let's go ahead and, you know, hop into the replays here. Now. Whenever I play uh, rookie tournaments, I always play with free balls, okay? So these are all balls that you can win in the game for free. You don't have to pay any money for them. The Berserker, uh, there are quite a few holes in this tournament that the Berserker would do really good on. Um, but I don't know how many of you have Berserkers out there. So I'm only going to use it on one hole, and I'm going to use it on hole number one. If you don't have a Berserker, then I want you to play this with a Titan. And a lot of people uh, wonder why not use a Kingmaker because there's a conception out there that a Kingmaker is better than a Titan. Um, well, it's really not. It just depends on your wind scenario. So think about this. Uh, you know, if you're a new player, you might not have made this correlation yet. So a Titan Ball gives you a Power 3 and a Kingmaker is a Power 3. A Titan Ball gives you side spin two, so you get two bars of side spin on either direction. A Kingmaker gives you side spin three, so you get one more bar of side spin. And then a Kingmaker reduces the wind one more level than a Titan does. 
Now, on a hole number one, you can see here that we're getting a crosswind with a tailwind. So the wind is blowing a little bit north, meaning that the ball is going to go further off of our drive. So if I were to use a kingmaker on this hole, my ball would not go as far because I'm reducing the wind, and that's not something we'd want to do. In this situation, I'm going to use a berserker. Now, these can be won free in the golden shots, uh, you know, on the hard edition. So if you're a newer player to the game, you may not be taking that shot. But if you would like, and you need to tell me in the comments, uh, every week I can do a golden shot tutorial guide that no matter your skill level of the game will help you get very close to the hole in one every time. That way you can load up on berserker balls because it's one of the better balls in the game. Uh, you can get for free. Now, let's hop into how we're going to play hole number one. Hole number one is going to be played on the drive with 10% elevation. So what does that mean if you're new to the game? It means that this drive is downhill. So therefore, that when we hit our ball, the game, the wind in the game is going to push our ball around more than it normally would. And that's the same thing like if you were hitting a golf ball in real life. If you're hitting a ball downhill, the ball technically stays in the air longer, meaning the wind is going to affect it more. And this game works the same way. One thing I would challenge you to do is to use the Golf Clash Notebook app. That is what I use. And if you're not familiar on how to use the app, I can also do an instructional video on the app. Uh, there's a lot of great content on YouTube already on how to get your app set up, but it does help you in the game. So for example, and again, this is just for the newer players, I'm going to use a power five ball. I'm going to use 10% elevation. I'm using my extra mile driver. And right now the wind is four miles an hour. So this top number right here means I'm at max distance of my club, the 1.9. So I'm going to move my target 1.9 rings after I know where I want to set up. And we're going to see if that makes sense right here. So on this shot, we are trying to get as close to the green as possible, which is why I'm using a power five ball. I'm using full top spin and I'm using a right side spin. And right here is where I adjust my rings, uh, 1.9 rings. I'm not going to go into the details of what rings mean, but again, if you don't understand it, then you know you need to blow me up in the comments because uh, if I get enough people who want to see that type of video, then I'll make it, and it will make you a much stronger player. So regardless here, I'm moving 1.9 rings, which brings my target back, but now I'm going to push it all the way back up to max so I get full distance. You can see I'm using a full overpower with half of a ball of right curl. And the most important thing is to hit perfect. If you hit this ball perfect like I did, which is difficult to do, all right, no lie, uh, you get all the way down here um, onto the fairway, which re leaves us with a very short shot to pin. And again, you don't have to have great clubs to make this shot. So I'm playing this shot with no elevation. So that means I'm just playing it straight up. I'm going to use a little bit of backspin here. So for you newer players, uh, I play with backspin. It helps me get, it helps give me good ball control. So I know here, uh, just because I've been playing the game a long time, if I use a little bit of backspin and I aim directly at the hole and I adjust for the wind properly, which is what I'm doing right here, if I hit a perfect ball, I should be very close to making this shot. Okay, so you see here on this par four, we pick up an eagle. That's a great way to start the tournament. Um, but again, you know, if you don't have a berserker ball, don't worry. Use a titan ball. But the biggest thing is with a titan ball, you're not going to be able to get the ball as far down on the fairway as I did. You'll have to lay up on the first fairway, but you'll take the same type of shot to the pin. It will be a more difficult shot to make, but it can still definitely be done. But if you have a berserker, that's the way you want to play this hole. Now, this is going to bring us into our first par three of the tournament. 
when you are playing rookie, you will very rarely ever use anything other than a navigator or a quasar ball for all par threes in a tournament on rookie. A power one ball is all you need. You would very rarely ever want to waste a good ball like a Titan or a Kingmaker on a par three because the power uh, does not help you, right? You don't need any power on a par three, which brings me to my next point. If you're a newer player to the game, do not use your Titans, do not use your Katanas, do not use your Kingmakers on any one-on-one -on -one play. It does not matter your club level. Um, you do not need anything more than a Marlin ball if you're playing tours one through four, all right? Um, I guess for a newer player on tour five, um, maybe tour four, you might want to start to mix in uh, some navigators and some quasars. But if you know how to adjust rings, you know, you could really go basic ball or Marlin all the way through tour five. And Tour 6 is where you'd really start to use, you know, probably like Navigators and Quasars. But you would never need to use a Kingmaker, a Katana, a Titan on any Tour until much later in the game. In fact, I don't even use those uh, at all. And I play Tour 10 with strictly Quasars and Katanas. And I do really good at it. But I have a high, you know, knowledge of the game. So you need to treat this game just like you would any other video game. Meaning, you want to grind away and away and away and level up your clubs so that you don't have to waste your good ammo. And the ammo in this game is balls. Um, so think about it from that perspective. And don't go too fast. There is a lot of algorithms in the game that you're probably not aware of that I had to learn the hard way about a year ago. Um you know, don't think that you need to go out there and win your weekly division all the time. You don't need to go out there and get a whole bunch of trophies. What you need to do is you need to spend a lot of time in one tour upgrading your clubs. For example, tour number two has the highest drop rate of extra mile cards. So if you're a newer player and you have the patience, you could play four or five, six, seven hundred games in a row in tour two. Yes, it'll get boring. But you could get your extra mile level extremely high, especially if you use your gems to constantly just keep opening chest. Now, there's a couple little tricks in the game to get gems at a very good value. For example, um, today is day one qualifying in a rookie tournament. If you just enter the tournament and you don't qualify on purpose, meaning you play no holes at all, tomorrow you're going to get a special deal for a dollar ninety nine, that is going to give you five hundred gems. It's going to give you ten thousand coins, maybe twenty thousand coins. I forget. And it's also going to give you twenty five katanas. That is an awesome value for two bucks. You could use those five hundred gems to just keep opening chest nonstop, right? So it's twenty gems to open up a silver chest. So you could open up 25 chests in a row um, for only two bucks. And that would allow you to gather a bunch of club cards and progress your clubs that way. Do not rush through the tours because you could get to the point to where you're going to get out clubbed. And it's not that the game is rigged. It's not that it's set up for you to lose. You just have to understand that when you get in higher tours, you might be playing someone like myself who, who knows how to grind the game and who has patience and they're going to kill you because their clubs are much higher. Fair or unfair, this is a video game and that's how it works, okay? That's enough of me talking. Let's go into hole number two. Hole number two is play with 10% elevation and a navigator ball. Now, I am using the Viper here. Most of the time, you're going to use a wood club or a long iron on part threes. In this particular situation, I have not used the Viper in forever. So I was not sure how much power this club has or how the ball rolls after I hit it. So, you know, right here, you know, you can tell I'm at max distance with my Viper. And, you know, I was looking at the ball guideline. So if you see here, I put on three bars of backspin. And then I changed it to two because I thought the ball guideline was short of the hole. Well, this is what happens when you have an underdeveloped ball guideline, and this is where you learn. 
Um, we need to change this to more backspin. You're going to see here that two bars of backspin put me in the sand. So that club is a little bit more powerful than I thought it was. Everybody, I want you to change this to four backspin. Four backspin and aim to the right side of the hole and see where that comes into play. Now, as you can see, I'm in the sand. And again, I've been playing the game for a long time. So, you know, being in the sand or being in the rough, like, doesn't, uh, doesn't really affect me too much. I'm pretty good uh, with hitting out of the sand on perfect balls, which I did here. And I still picked up the birdie. So we got the birdie on the par three. We're off to a really good start in this tournament. Now, hole number three is where I really need everybody to start paying attention because in a tournament, you're going to be changing your bag a lot, especially if you're in a lower clan like I have this account in and I only have two bags. So hole number one, we played with our extra mile and we only had to play with a long iron or a short iron. So really nothing needed there outside of your normal clubs. Hole number two, you're going to use your normal clubs. But hole number three, we are not going to use our normal clubs that we use. We're going to use a rocket driver, and we're going to use the horizon as our wood club. It's very important that you take that down for notes if you're following me, because you don't want to come to this hole with the wrong club combination. Now, uh, can you play this shot with your extra mile? Absolutely you can, for sure. But the reason we're using the rocket is because we're going to play on the right-hand fairway, which is a very, very small fairway. The rocket is less powerful than the extra mile, but we do not need power to make this drive successful. What we need is we need to know where our ball is going. The rocket has a good ball guideline, and it's also an accurate club. So you're going to have more wiggle room if you accidentally hit a great shot, and your ball... Uh, is going to play truer with a more accurate club to where your ball guideline is. Now, so let's see what we're doing here. We are playing this shot with 10% elevation, and we're going to use a Titan ball because we want the power on the second shot. Now, you can see here I'm using full left spin with a little bit of back spin because we don't want our ball to go too far onto this fairway and roll into the rough. If you do that, you're probably not going to eagle this hole because you cannot get to the green in two shots. Picking up the eagle on a par five is extremely important. And you can see on the drive here, I use a little bit of curl to the left. I call this baby curl. So let me rewind it and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So after I set my shot up, all right, so this is basically where I'm aiming. I'm kind of aiming on the right-hand middle side of the fairway. And then when I go to take my shot, I use that curl right there. So I call that baby curl. If you ever hear me refer to baby curl, that means I'm taking the left side of my ball here and just touching the left side of the target. If I say baby right curl, same thing. Right side of the ball would touch the right side of the target. And the reason that I do that is because I'm trying to get a little bit more towards the middle part of the fairway, which is exactly how I land here. And that's going to bring us to the shot with the horizon. The reason that we're using the horizon over your big dog or your viper is because we want the top spin and we want the ball guideline. The horizon has a very good ball guideline and it has a ton of top spin, which is going to help us get onto the green here. So in this situation, I use full left spin. And I take that off because I don't want to go into the rough on the left-hand side here. And we're going to be playing pretty close to the rough. So I decided just to make this four and a half top spin. And again, no elevation. So what I'm doing here is I'm moving my target um, based off of mathematical science to the game. And if I do this correctly, my ball is going to land exactly uh, where I aimed, as long as I hit a perfect ball. Now, I didn't hit a perfect ball. I hit a great shot to the right. But the good part is, that's okay on this particular hole. 
And since I hit great right, I came in just to the right a little bit. And who knows what would have happened with a perfect ball. Maybe we would have picked up an albatross. I don't know. Uh, hard to tell. But as you can see here, we are right next to the cup for, for a very easy eagle on hole number three. So now we're starting this tournament minus five through the first three holes, which is a great start, uh, especially, especially with these clubs. Now, we're going to be playing um, again with another odd club here. I really wanted uh, to use a Goliath on this hole, which is a club that I would normally use in Rookie. But my Goliath is only a level three, and I wasn't sure if I was going to have the curl that I needed to make this shot successful. So I went with the Grim Reaper. This is a club that I don't think I've ever used before, uh, period, in the entire game. But we're going to play this 10% elevation. We're going to play it at max distance of our club. And you're going to see the spin that I went with here, which is going to be three bars of backspin and three bars of right side spin. Now, that three bars of right side spin is actually max for a katana. And if you look at my ball guideline, I've kind of got it you know, parallel with the hole. And again, this is a 10% elevation adjustment. This tree is kind of getting in my way here, which is pretty annoying. But again, if I do this correctly and I hit a perfect ball, then my ball's going to go exactly where I was aiming. Now, look at my right curl. I'm using a significant amount of right curl. It ends up being just too much. I need to probably, you know, use about half of a ball of right curl. And maybe that'll get us closer to the hole in one. Now, this is a difficult hole to get a hole on one on anyways. And you'll probably see some opponents mess this hole up and get a par. But that's a very, very safe way for everybody to pick up a birdie. Now, hole number five. And you have to keep in mind that as you're going through the tournament, um, you need to constantly change your bag to make sure you have the right club set up. So that's why you should be taking notes um, if you're following me along with me. Or I get a lot of feedback saying that players do really good if you watch my video like on another device. So maybe you're playing on your tablet and you can watch my video on your phone. Or you can put my video on your smart TV or on your laptop, desktop, whatever. Um, you know, watch me play a hole number one, pause, and then you play a hole number one, so on and so forth as the tournament goes. If you follow along, the feedback is that's when players do really good. But now let's talk about hole number five. Hole number five is going to be played with our extra mile club, okay, for our driver. And, we, you know, you can probably just use your Viper or whatever your best wood club is. Now, the drive is going to be played with no elevation. This is a pretty flat surface shot, so I didn't put any elevation on there. But the second shot appears to be downhill, so I play it with 10% elevation. This is another situation where you don't want to use a Kingmaker. You want to use a Titan because a Kingmaker would reduce the wind on the drive, and that's not what we want. And a Kingmaker is a much more valuable ball in the game as well. Uh, which is something I can talk about at a different time. We can talk about ball value in the game. But regardless, we're going to be using our extra mile. Now, we're going to be aiming in between the trees. Kind of a riskier shot uh, for a rookie division. If you have a berserker ball, okay? If you have a berserker ball, use it. Um, I will be playing this with a berserker in the next round. But I didn't want to use too many Berserkers because I don't know how many of you actually have that ball that are watching a video like this. But if you have a Berserker, you can get really darn close to driving the green on a par 4 and putting for an eagle, which would be huge. Obviously, we want to use full topspin here because we want our ball to go as far as possible. Now, I want to pause this real quick. Oh, shoot. Come on, Dave. Um, let's get back to where we were. I want to pause this because I want you to uh, think about some things you might not think about, especially if this is one of your first times playing. Notice 
where my ball guide line is going. It is going straight into the sand or into the rough. So if I were to take this shot straight up, that's where my ball would go. So what we have to do to counter effect that is we have to use right curl on our drive. And you'll see what I mean here. So after I adjust my rings, I push my target back up to max to get maximum distance. And then you'll see here. So notice right here, I'm using about half of a ball of curl into the adjustment target. And that is to make sure that if I hit a perfect ball, that my ball does not roll into the sand. You know, it hooks to the right of that area. Pretty fortunate today to be hitting some perfect balls. But you can see here that by doing so, we avoid the sand, we avoid the rough, and we get a really nice roll down here for a very short shot to pick up an extra eagle. Now, again, if you have a berserker, you could, you could get way further down than I did, possibly to the green. So, you know, that would be very exciting to pick up a putt for an eagle. But regardless... This is also a great position to be in. I'm using my dart. Looks like I'm about at max distance. So I used almost two bars of backspin. I did 10% elevation. And if you're getting confused on the elevation part, or you're getting confused on the rings, think about this right now. I'm getting four mile an hour wind, and I'm aiming directly at the pin. So if I don't pull my target back a little bit, you know, my ball is going to fly past the cup. But there is a science to the elevation and to the rings. And again, you know, if you guys blow up my comments and you want an additional video on how to use the ring system and notebook app, then I'll be glad to make it for you. And you can see here, we get a really smooth roll into the cup for an extra eagle. Puts us on to hole number six. Okay, hole number six is going to be uh, one of the more difficult par fives in the tournament for us who have lower level clubs. And I'm hoping I'm doing a good job explaining to you, you know, on how to attack each hole. If you're a newer player and this is overwhelming to you, just stick with it. Don't even worry about how good you do right now. Uh, just get used to how I go through the videos because you will become a better player. Don't give up. Don't scratch watching this. Um, just do your best. Who cares if you shoot a minus four or a minus five or hell, maybe you don't even make it to the next round or you don't make it to the final round. Neither did I um, when I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, I went like 15 tournaments uh, before I ever made it uh, to the second round. Um, but again, you know, I didn't know about rings. I didn't know about elevation. I didn't know about the Golf Clash Notebook app. And if you don't know about it either, then, you know, I'm going to help you out. Just stick with me. Let me be the person you follow from here on out. And I'm going to teach you how to dominate this game. Now, this is going to be a very difficult shot. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, we're going to use a Titan Ball. And the only way I could think to do this was with a rough bump with our driver. And we don't do that too often. On higher level clubs, you know, this would be a good hole to take a quarterback to and, and do a good little hook shot. Um, but we don't have that option here, at least I don't. So we can still make it work. So what I want to do is I'm going to use 10% elevation and I'm using top spin and right spin, you know, and I'm going to move my target until at least my ball guideline shows I'm on the fairway. Right there, it shows I'm in the rough. Move this to the left and I'm on the fairway. And again, you know, I'm going to pull this 10% elevation, which is about 1.8 rings with an extra mile five. And yes, every club has its own rings. Um, every level of every club has different rings, which is why it's really good to use an app um, which helps you understand all that at a very quick rate. So we're on the fairway, all right? That's great. Now, this shot is significantly downhill, so I added 20% elevation to this drive. All right, now, 
the thing about this is, is if you see me here, oh, I hope I can, I need to do a better job at knowing how to get, okay, into my frames. There we go. All right, so look at this. I am trying to see by stretching my club out here, what would happen on this shot? So I know right here, if I overpower my shot, I can definitely make it to the green. But if I do that without adding any backspin, well, shoot, I'm going to fly back into that sand. So here's what I decide to do. This is going to be uh, the best way for you to approach it if you're in a similar spot as me. Um, since, my, since my club right here is in the rough, that's as far as my club will go. I know I have to overpower to make it this way. So what I do here is I add full backspin, okay? And I add left side spin. Now that's a lot better. I know that if I overpower my shot, you know, my ball is going to die on the green or on the fairway, which is exactly what I want. So now we go back to taking the shot. And then remember, I push it back to max to get my full distance back, and I'm using the overpower. About half a ball of overpower. I didn't need a whole lot. But that's what we want. And you see here, this is great. We're on the green on a par 5 with low-level clubs picking up our eagle. Okay, now this is going to be hole number 7. I was a little confused on how to play this one because I normally would play this shot with the Goliath, which is a more powerful club than a backbone, but less accurate. But it's a club I'm used to using. So um, we're still on the green. So don't judge me for this shot because it's not very good. But um, you know, I was just trying to find a good spot to land. Now, the biggest thing about this hole is you have to understand that this slopes the green very fast. So if you hit this ball too hard or you don't apply the correct backspin, if you go too far onto this hole, you're going to go way down the green into the rough. And that's bad news. That's a very difficult shot to make. So I decided to play back here and use, you know, two and a half bars of, of side spin to the right. But I should have trusted my ball guideline and saw how short I was. You know, but I got a little bit nervous because of hole number two to where my ball guideline was short, if you remember, with my Viper Club, but then I went too long into the sand. So, you know, I didn't want to gamble. I played this one 10% elevation at medium distance of my club with no curl. And as you can see, you know, it was just too much backspin. But that's okay. You know, that's obviously a very easy putt uh, for a birdie with no fear of going too far onto the back side of the green. You know, but this is something that we might be able to get a hole-in-one on as the tournament progresses. Okay, hole number eight. Now, um, hole number eight, if you have a big topper, and a big topper at any level will work. I don't have a big topper, but I have several replays of this hole saved because this is... Um, Tour number eight, which I have a lot of YouTube videos on. And this hole, if you have a big topper at any level, is actually a very easy hole to drive the green on. And that's going to be a huge advantage in this tournament because you're going to be putting or chipping in for an eagle on another par four to where a lot of your opponents are going to get stuck in the sand, they're going to get stuck in the trees, or they're going to get stuck in the rough. Here is what you need to do. This is all you need to do with a big topper. Is you're going to apply full top spin and then a half of a bar of left side spin. And you're going to aim just in front of this uh, sand bunker here until your ball guideline, okay? Do you see the ball guideline at the bottom? So, so look down towards the fairway and green area. Notice how my ball guideline is just barely barely touching the fairway. That's very important. If you put too much of your ball guideline into the fairway, your ball is actually going to top spin past the green into the sand back there. 
So having it just on the rough line and barely onto the fairway at the bottom is perfect. From here, you're going to adjust at no elevation. And I apologize for how grainy this is because I took a uh, screen recording of a video and I guess this is just how it turned out. But you're going to see when you play it this way, if you do it exactly like I said, your ball is going to clip the rough right there and come in very good speed to get down here towards the hole. But um, I don't have a, a big topper on this account. So I was trying to use a Horizon Club because a Horizon Club has a lot of topspin and um, it did not work out well. So, you know, it just doesn't have enough topspin to power us down to the bottom here where we need. But uh, I'm going to just continue to play it this way, okay? Because I'm not going to get stuck in the top of the sand here and... I'm okay to just play this one for a birdie. You know, that's really hard for me to say because this, this hole with the right club is an easy eagle to get. And I would love to have a good club on this account to do it, but that's the point of this account. This point is to not have good clubs and to help everybody um, who doesn't have good clubs. But regardless, I get stuck in the bunker here. That's not a big deal. That's a very easy uh, shot onto the green. I did not make the shot, but it's all it's still going to be a birdie, okay? You're picking up a birdie on a par 4. That's good. And then we move on to the next hole, which is going to be um our last hole, okay? Hole number 9. So do me a favor everybody. I really really hope this is helping you. I really do. I just want to make everybody a better player at the game. And I want to make everybody understand that if you know how to play the game, you don't have to have good clubs. You don't have to spend money on balls in order to win tournaments or to even place high in tournaments. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. And, you know, if you're a generous person and you have the means to do so, please support my channel via a donation. I put a link to my PayPal in the comments section. So, you know, if you're somebody who, who finds this helpful and you have the means to donate, please do. Um, it really means a lot to me. Okay, hole number nine. Here we go. Hole number nine, you're going to use an extra mile for your driver, and you're going to use a big dog. The big dog is the wood club. We need a lot of power. I'm playing this shot with 20% elevation as it's pretty good downhill. So I, I pull my 20% here. And I just leave the target where it's at. You know, that way my ball doesn't go too far. You saw my backspin. I was using full backspin because we don't want to roll into the rough. If we roll into the rough, we're dead in the water. Apparently my iPad is dying. I need to get it hooked up. Looks like it's Goober's turn. I don't know why it's still going okay. Now, this shot um, <laughs> was not is, is very tricky, and I feel like I got pretty lucky. I'm pretty far away from the green here, um, and this is, again, just not having good clubs. I was hoping I could do a rough bump with a big dog, as that's how I've played this hole before in the last tournament, the Redwood tournament, but uh, I can't. And I'm well short, so I had to go full top spin. Now, keep in mind, when I say full top spin... Okay, I'm referring to a big dog three. If some of you folks have better big dogs, you got to be really careful with the top spin because you're going to have more than me. So I would say if you're in the same position as I am, look at that, four top spin and two less spin, uh, that's plenty because I almost hit this ball too far. Now, I adjusted this one with no elevation, uh, uh, period. I didn't even adjust my target. I just took the shot because I was so far away and it's pretty much a dead tailwind. And I would have loved to clip the rough right there and, and slow my ball down. So I feel like I got lucky that my ball didn't roll too far. And obviously this was a very um this is a very simple shot um to get the eagle. So, you know, there it is, everybody. Uh, minus 14 on very beginner-like clubs, kind of a true rookie account. 
again, you know, I hope you found this helpful. You know, I hope you choose to follow along with me every week. I have a great following of people. You know, we get a lot of great comments and, you know, it seems to be a pretty good community here in this channel. Good luck, everybody. I hope you kick butt. Let me know what you need in the comment section. Thanks.